Hi, this is Dr. Winnell, and I took a left at the valley. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith in us. Coming at you with holiday cheer, this is Left of the Valley. My name is Kevin, and my girlfriend told me to take the spider out instead of killing him. So I went out, had a few drinks. Nice guy. He's actually a web designer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Joining me as usual is a team that will tell you that love is like a fart. If you have to force it, it's probably shit. Pretty freaking much. Yeah. She wonders if no one from the future comes back to stop it, and how bad can it really be? Christina. Exactly. It's basically the, like, the, the rule to live by. Though, future people, why haven't you gone back to kill Trump yet? Seriously. <laughs> well, maybe there's a reason. Okay, that's true. Okay. And she'll like tell you... Hitler. And she'll tell you not to think of yourself as an ugly person, but as a beautiful monkey. <laughs> oh my god. Kevin, I'm so happy that you, you finally accepted that advice we've been giving you for so long. <laughs> Ladies, welcome back. <laughs> Apparently I'm a beautiful monkey. <laughs> welcome to the monkey show. <laughs> Shouldn't that be welcome to the jungle? Oh, nice. <laughs> So today we're going to have a bit of a satire show because we're going to be taking on our prank war to the next level against a secular soup. And that's going to be in the second half of the show. But first, let's do a bit of a chit-chat. Uh, did you guys hear that uh, Andrew Scheer, the conservative leader and the Canadian party of uh, the, the conservative, uh, basically resigned? I did hear this. Yeah, apparently there's some allegations that he used campaign funds to pay for his children's private school. <laughs> I'm oh. so shocked. <laughs> wow. Who would have thunk that? The conservative that usually say, you know, we do too much socialism, basically use... <laughs> Sub funds to subsidize his kids to go to school? Isn't that interesting, right? right? Mm. Corruption. Is that hypocr hip hypocrisy? I think so. Uh, he's going to continue to serve for the MP for Regina. Uh, his stance on the LGBTQ and abortion has basically uh, caused loss of support in Toronto and in the province of Quebec, which are, of course, both keys to winning the election. Mm -hmm. Good riddance. Goodbye. Yep. I, I, I've said previously on the show in a couple of episodes past that um, the mistake that he did is he took a, p a page from the Republican book mm -hmm. in the South and basically uh, tried to push a social conservatism, which does not work nope. here in Canada. You can you can push fiscal conservatism, sure, absolutely. Social conservatism, it doesn't work. You're not. You, we're not Republicans. No. We're not holy church goers. We're not. No. So, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> so, good rinse to him. Um, did you guys hear that uh, Finland's new coalition government is comp actually composed of five parties and they're all led by women? That is amazing, and I did not hear that. I feel that. like I heard a snippet about that. Yeah, the, the prime minister actually will be the youngest in the world. She's only 34. Her name That's is nice. Sanna Marlin. Um, uh, all four of the five leaders are actually under 35 years old. I mean, go Finland. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, finally. Uh, the former PM, which is Alexander Stubb, basically says that it shows that Finland is modern and progressive, and I have a tendency to agree. Yep. Yeah. So that's great news. Um, and this is from picknews.co, .co, CO, sorry. A Brazilian comedy group released a Netflix Christmas <laughs> special, and this is a gay parody of Jesus. I almost did that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing his boyfriend to meet his parents. That's amazing. Is it actually on Netflix right now? Can we go watch I don't it? know if it's on the, it's. Uh, it's uh, it, oh. Either it's on now or it's about to be. I, I also don't know if it. it'll be on Canadian Netflix. That might be a I'm different I'm going to pirate this and watch <laughs> it. Uh, Brazil, of course, as you know, is mostly Catholic. Uh, apparently, there was a petition and one million people signed a petition to stop the Primera Tentacion de Cristo, which is the first temptation of Christ. Oh, my <laughs> translated. gosh. The comedy group is called Pontas del Fundos, which actually translates literally to back door. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, it got better. 
and they create multi Python style skits, right? Oh. And last year they released The Last Hangover, which is a parody of The Hangover, where the disciples wake up hungover after the Last Supper. That's amazing. So that is just, be- oh I love these people already. I wonder I wonder if they have stuff on YouTube. Oh, probably. I, they probably do. They probably do. You could probably find that. I need on to YouTube. find this. So <laughs> be able to look out for these guys. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, Greta Thornburg. Uh, has been named Times Person of the Year. Yay! That's a yep. 16-year-old uh, uh, climate activist from uh, Sweden, right? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Mango Mussolini couldn't let that stand. Oh, my God. You think he'd have class and say congratulations or something really? like that? Really? No. You actually thought he might? Well, no. no I, didn't <laughs> think, I didn't think. But normally... You think someone would tell him to? Oh, a normal, decent person. a toddler in adult form. But a normal, decent person... <laughs> much even less a president of the United States, would actually kind of have some class about that. It's not like it's a competition either, right? It's like, yeah, congratulations, good for you, right? That's the that's no way a normal person reacts, but no, not him. Uh, and then he went, his his campaign managed to Photoshop his face on her body on the cover. Okay, but it's better than what they did with Photoshopping his face onto Thanos. Well, that, that, was, that was the next thing. That was the next thing I was about to say. I mean, has, have these idiots lost it? They, they, they've got this commercial now, the, the release from his campaign, where Trump's head is Photoshopped over Thanos from the Avengers, which, of course, in the movie, Thanos is the bad guy who commits genocide on a universe level. Yep. You know, and they got Trump with the the content saying, I am inevitable, and snap his fingers. I mean, are these people just fucking stupid? Yes, yes, I mean, they are. don't they realize that they're so out of touch? Don't they realize you're putting your, your president, the, the supposed good guy? I mean, I don't know. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the face of the worst villain ever? No, I gotta say, it would be kind of funny if, like... It was mostly his supporters that disappeared. Oh my gosh, that would be magical. I mean, just say. Why would they? Why would they Photoshop the? Uh, why would they Photoshop the, the scene in Star Wars where Darth Vader removes his helmet and they have Trump's face there while they're at? Oh, that you know? would be why not? magical. Why not? I mean, if you're going to be so stupid about this, uh, and and of course Trump tweeted for uh, Greta. He, he tweeted he tweeted quote so ridiculous. Greta must work on her anger management problem, then go to good old. Fa- Fashion movie with a friend. Chill, Greta, chill. And, uh, and says the person who did like a hundred tw- and one tweets in like one day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And chill. Greta basically w- replied by switching her Twitter profile to reflect Trump's. I mean, basically, her Twitter profile now reads that she's a teen working on anger pro- on her anger uh, problem. Uh. Currently chilling and watching a movie with a friend. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I love her, her so much more now. <laughs> she just she's like whatever. She actually has class. She has, she has class. You know she could she could have just tweeted back fuck you Trump or something like that. That would have been his level. But no, she just tweeted back something. She with, didn't even tweet back. She just no, changed her. She just changed her. She she replied in with class. You know, <laughs> way more oh, than he could ever. That is my favorite way to reply to. Someone. How I kind of see what she does. It's almost like she's not even engaging with him. She's yeah. engaging with everyone else that sees how ridiculous it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and she's like, see, <laughs> the president of the United States being showed off by a sixteen-year-old girl from Sweden. It's not exactly <sighs> hard, though. Yeah, it's He's, like... doesn't set a high bar. No, but also, by the way, the fact that she's a, a person of the year for Time Magazine also means that she's the youngest person to ever have that honor as well. That's awesome. That is amazing. So, and props to her for dealing with him without, like, bursting a blood vessel. Yeah, and it's, it's, there's, so, there's so much anger for Trump's and conservative supporters towards this little girl, which I, I, I don't know. I, I can't understand why. Well, it's really interesting. I've seen it even come from people on the left. I don't, it's, I don't. it's like I don't get like I, I don't get it fully. No. Like I think it might be like they don't think that someone could actually accomplish what she's accomplished. Yeah. But it's like it happens. I mean, the funny thing is, is that this girl is a bit smart because she knew very, very well that when she was invited to go talk to the UN, she knew very well that if she were to fly to the UN, people say, "Well, yeah, you're a big mm-hmm. climate activist, and you took a plane to the UN because that's the first thing they do, right?" It's a bit like when they say, "Oh, David Suzuki is a big climate guy, but look at him—he's driving around the bus with his team." Mm-hmm. Well, what option does she have? That's the only yeah. option she has. So she actually sailed across the ocean. You know, she actually did something pretty green. She sailed across the freaking ocean. 
and went back the same way, they couldn't bash on this. And they can't bash on a message either because her message is on point and it reflects the science and she's correct. So they have to attack her. Yeah. And, and it was, th- yeah, it was thought out. It wasn't just that message that was thought out. It was the entire... Yes. The whole thing was thought out. And now there's some people peddling some stupid conspiracy. That's how she's being groomed yep, totally. by the likes of Al Gore and some big environment green thing, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, and it's really interesting because, like, if you look at, okay, they're having this conspiracy about this one girl who took her, her, what's it, like the scenario she was born into and used it for better. When you look at Malala, or Ma- oh, what's yeah, her name? Malala Yousafzai. Yeah, like, she did the same thing. She took her scenario she was born in and changed. Yeah. She tried, she did her best to change the surrounding area. Yeah. I we, don't, people don't look at her and say, oh, she's being groomed. Yeah, she's being it's groomed like, by Big Bad Aid, you know? It's like, <laughs> what the hell? You know, nobody says that about her. Yeah, it's like, like... People, like there are teenage girls who look at the world and it's like I can change the world yeah. and they change it like that happens. This is this is a, this is a girl whose little story started that she was in her her hometown and just holding a sign and protesting and that was over a year ago mm-hmm. and you know it, it's it's and people say well it's impossible for a girl for one year and to all of a sudden show up at yeah the guess what's also really? impossible for life to evolve yeah but yeah. guess what it fucking did. <laughs> Why, why would it be impossible, you know? Well, her message is compelling. She's she's, she's a charismatic figure, and she's 16, and she's got energy. She's angry, and rightfully so. Uh, and and I, I don't understand these fools out there just peddling some kind of stupid conspiracy. I had some guy argue with me for hours about how the the, the fact that she's a, a, an activist is just for her to start selling trick kits you know about uh, uh, of her name. It's just like a big marketing ploy. I said, okay, well, let's let's find out what there is for sale. And apparently, there is somewhere out there in the world a mug, like a fifteen dollar mug for your coffee with the image of Gret on it. It says, see, see, she's selling mugs now. Oh wow, thank goodness, you know, big mug is, is out there to <laughs> wow. get us. Yeah, I'm gonna spend all my money at the distraction for Greta and idolizing. Her. I said, like, come on, yeah. People grow a brain, okay? The girl's right. Uh, the girl is correct. We need to do something about this. And she's she's basically calling us out for what we have avoided to do all these years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's doing the good... She's doing it in a good way. She's not like individuals are at fault. No, she's like corporations are at fault. Yeah. It's the governments. It's the corporations. They're the ones that are fucking over the planet. Yeah, like exactly. One individual does not have a negligible impact on the planet. It's the corporations that are fucking everything up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. Well, Nancy's not here today, but we do have a top ten, so who's taking care of that? You oh, take, me. You take care of that? I, I made her do it. <laughs> They're forcing me into it. <laughs> but hey, at least it's actually about something that I do a lot. There we go. Because <laughs> this week we have the top ten Stitcher podcasts you don't want to miss. So Stitcher is one of those uh, podcast providers, a bit like uh, YouTube, uh, well, YouTube and Blog Talk Radio and uh, uh, Spreaker and all that stuff. And this is Stitcher. So the top yeah. ten podcasts from it's, Stitcher. It's just a, a app or website that has a lot of podcasts and you can like download them and stuff. We better be number one on that podcast. Oh, we are definitely not. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure these aren't in any specific order. I'm going to call these people. Yeah, right? Okay, so the first one is called Oddball, um, and it's uh, Lindsay Kilbride. Uh, she's Special Projects Producer at WJCT, um, and she's a host of a new podcast investigating a local UFO mystery that de- de- debut there's the word, debuts October. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> so it, it examines uh, the mystery of it's called the Bet Sphere. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a strange metal ball found 45 years ago in a remote part of Fort George Island in Jackson, Jacksonville. Oh, nice. So like I, I personally haven't listened to this one, so I don't know like the style of it or anything. But if I know a lot of people are interested in kind of like listening to the "Quote unquote supernatural." I was a big fan of that. Yeah, well, I grew up. I grew up on all that. Yeah, <laughs> I still listen to Alex Jones oh, for the God. fun. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I don't listen to Alex Jones. I listen to Knowledge Fight. Yes. They listen to Alex Jones for me. <laughs> yeah. So if you're interested in kind of like the weird stuff going on that is probably not real, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> um, 
So the next one is called Heaven's Gate. Um, and this is about... Um, well, it's not about that cult. It is exactly about that cult. Oh, God. Yeah, it's about a bizarre news story uh, that hit the national news in 1997. Um, it's about 29 people who killed themselves by ingesting poison in a mansion near San Diego. All 39 of them, uh, they were dressed identically and had the same haircuts. And they were all members of the Heaven's Gate cult. So, um, in their videotape farewell messages, they insisted their suicide was not a final death. They were simply shedding their earthly bodies in order to meet a UFO they believed <sighs> was traveling, the hale Bob Comet. Yeah, I A UFO that. that would transport them to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, my God. The yeah. worst part is, when you looked at the, the, that video of the... Uh, the, the, the cult leader, whose name I forget right now, he just looks nuts. He just looks absolutely crazy. You just look at his eyes like, oh, God. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I'm not sure I could have a conversation with this guy at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if, Tragedy. if, if the in, inner workings of cult are something that you're interested in, have at it. Mm. Um, so this is this is the section I've actually listened to. <laughs> so it's um, new from Marvel's Universe. Oh, there we go. Um, it's a podcast. Um, so here, it says, A podcast hosted by Groot would easily p become repetitive. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> and all that. But Marvel is betting fans of Star-Lord, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Wolverine are eager to hear about their lives and universe-saving missions on a weekly basis. The Walt Disney-owned company announced Tuesday it's joining forces with Sirius XM and Pandora to launch a series of superhero-based shows in 2020. Powerful stories are read, seen, and heard, and we believe audio is the next natural step to bring the Marvel Universe to fans around the world, said Dan Buckley, president of Marvel Entertainment. So that's one I am definitely going to be listening to. <laughs> I already listened to a couple of the Marvel um, podcasts that they have on. They're, they're, really, they're really interesting. I love them. Okay, so another one is uh, called Passenger List. Suspicious of the official version of events, Caitlin Lee begins her own investigation into the disappearance of Atlantic Flight 702, and with it, her twin brother. Um, so you can visit the passengerlist.org to see a script and full list of credits for traffic and join the investigation. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. That sucks that she lost her twin. That would definitely make you want to look more into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so another one is called Moon Face. It's a fiction show about a Korean-American son who wants to come out to his mother, but can't because they don't speak the same language. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Well, so he speaks English and she's, she speaks Korean. That's what I'm assuming is yeah. going on. Yeah. That, that, that would, would be interesting. That would suck. <laughs> like, I need to tell you, but I can't speak your language. <laughs> Okay, so another one is called Slow Burn. On the first episode of Slow Burn's third season, how a violent robbery served Tupac's friendship, or sorry, severed Tupac's friendship with Biggie Smalls and sparked a bi-coastal beef that consumed the world of hip-hop. In November 1940, sorry, no, no. Numbers. I can't do this, guys. <laughs> <In November. laughs> You're doing so good. In November 1994, while on trial for sexual abuse, Tupac, I don't know his last name. Shakur. Shakur, thank you, is shot five times in New York, in a New York recording studio. In the aftermath, he starts to suspect that his er, erstwhile friend, Christopher Wallace, better known as Biggie Smalls, might be involved. It was the start of a beef that would consume the world of hip hop and end with both men dead. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. So if you actually are interested in hip hop, or I am not. <laughs> no, Tupac is uh, pretty much legendary in there, for sure. I'm like, I don't Cuban know this beef. person. <laughs> okay, so another one. This was one I would be super interested in listening to. It's called Haunted. So it's Deputy mm -hmm. U.S. Marshals Emily Barnes and Anthony Mora investigate a daring prison escape in South Texas. From legendary producer Dick Wolf comes a new audio fiction starring Parker Posey uh, about the U.S. Marshals dedicated to capturing the country's most dangerous, fu dangerous fugitives. When four convicts escape from a maximum security prison, Deputy Marshals uh, uh, Emily 
Barnes is called in to pursue the criminals in one of the most treacherous and violent manhunts in United States history. Mm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That actually does sound really interesting. Yeah. Ooh, this one would be sad. So this this podcast is called Knowing Robin Williams. Oh. And it takes you inside the lawless and brilliant mind of one of America's most beloved co- uh, comedians. Yeah. Join New it's York Times reporter Dave It's cough and host Christy Westgard as they share never before heard interviews and thoughtful analysis to celebrate the life and legacy of a comedic genius. That would be really really interesting to listen to. But yeah, sad. Because so. it's like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> okay. Um, that would really shock me when I heard that. Robin Williams dead. Yeah. I really was shocked. I don't really me. remember. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this one is called Last Day. So it's, let's talk about what's killing us. The stuff that's hard to comprehend and getting worse every day. LaMonda co-founder and author Stephanie Whitt- Whittles wa- watches... Oh, she has three names. Whittles watches. <laughs> okay. Confronts massive epidemics with humanity, wit, and a quest for progr- progress. Starting with overdose deaths and the opioid crisis, we zoom in on a person's last day of life, exploring how they got there and how we as a society have gotten gotten here. That would be really useful to listen to mm-hmm. because so many people don't actually like take into context what happens. Okay, so there's one more. It's super short. So it's Amy should be 40. Uh, Vault Studios and WKYC Studios in Cleveland look at the kidnapping and killing of Amy, cannot pronounce that last name, on, That's the, a weird last name. <laughs> on the 30th anniversary of her murder. Yep. I will not be listening to that. That'd be way too triggering for me. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you so much. I appreciate that. As I stumble through that. <laughs> <laughs> All All right. My dear Kirsten, you ready to give us a, another brilliant moment? I almost wasn't, but yes, I am. Brought to you by religion. And technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the holiday season is upon us. Gross. Yes, it is. And so I thought I'd find a story that's, you know, holiday inspired. It's the season. So offensive Christmas card company draws manufactured outrage from Christians. Oh, oh. beautiful. No, they don't have a Hallmark already. Christmas anymore. <laughs> There's a line of parody Christmas cards from the British company Love Layla Designs that purposely mocks the traditional Christian story. Good. I want to invest stock in that company. Oh, beautiful. I can send you the link later. <laughs> I found it already. Like the one that reads, Mary just needs to admit she slept with someone else. Fucking right. <laughs> or the one for people with birthdays in December that says, I'm sorry your December birthday is overshadowed by a bloke that wore socks with sandals. Oh, shit. Though, <laughs> so did he wear socks? Did he really? I don't know. I don't he know. Probably, I think, he I think probably Jesus would've. was probably a bit of a nerd. Probably There's, had a big afro or something. They're yeah, meant to be I, funny. I, I'd see him more of a, like a stoner than a nerd. <laughs> no, well, he's not cool enough to be that. Yeah, not all stoners are cool. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> sorry, bud. They're not all cool. Jesus on weed? Come on. <laughs> You really think Jesus would take a pot? Oh, you know, when you listen to some of his sermons, maybe, you know. Yup. Uh-huh. Blessed are the meek, man. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> They're meant to be funny, and there's a market for people who find them hilarious. I'm sure there's 30 people right here that find them hilarious. <laughs> I'd get it and give it to my mom. Oh, God Jesus damn. Jesus Christ. That'd be, That'd be amazing. Oh, and there's more. That's just two of them. There's so many more. Uh, but if you read the tabloidy Independent, you'd get the sense that there are a bunch of Christians who are infuriated by the cards. That's also true, I'm sure. <laughs> one headline says the cards spark anger among Christian community. Oh, yes. But only one person is listed as offended, and it's possible they reached out to that person specifically for comment, hoping to create a controversy. Well, in a way, he is a, 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 a you know, a... Um colony of bacteria so maybe, maybe it's all the bacteria within him that are angry at this <laughs> a lot of Christians will be deeply offended by this sort of thing said James Mildred communication manager of Christian Action Research James and Mildred? Education even his name sounds boring right it highlights a fundamental hypocrisy that Christianity is seen as fair game to mock 
<laughs> and so, hold on, hold on a sec. Why is Christianity not fair game to mock? That's the question I have. Why Why is this Christianity so sacred we can't mock it? Mr. Mildred added that the card is the opposite of respectful, That's stating that cards of this ilk are released on an annual basis. Hmm. Yeah. Christmas cards and December birthday cards released on an annual basis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good thing, oh, right? It's almost like they only come once a year. <laughs> Every year. Oh. It's just another sad example of the kind of under the radar discrimination Christians oh around Europe are God. currently facing. Discrimination? They see this as discrimination? No, we see under you, the radar oh discrimination. God, yeah. you, you have to remember what the late great Christopher Hitchens said. He says we we must never forget how religion acted when it had ultimate power. Yep. And when they it did have ultimate power, that kind of stuff got you killed. It mm-hmm. did. And we must never go back to that. Please continue. That's an admittedly dumb thing to say. It's not discrimination to joke about a silly story that a bunch of ignorant people take seriously, nor is it hypocritical to mock a religion that many British people have a familiarity with. But Mildred isn't protesting or calling on people to boycott the company. He's a believer who lacks a sense of humor. And that's fine. The cards aren't meant for him. No, no. No. They're meant for us. (laughs) <laughs> Although it is one of my favorites, and you know, I remember seeing a, po- a postal card of it basically see from Joseph to Mary it says, "Mary, you know, just admit you slept with somebody else. This is getting out of hand." Right. <laughs> and the company get this was founded by a woman who was nearly broke at the time. Oh wow, that's so a good Rex to Richard story. All of this publicity now is beautiful. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go right ahead. <laughs> you know where else we can, can? Where can we find these cards? Please let me know. I hope Amazon has them. Uh, you totally got the link? Send me them. the link later. I do. Fantastic. If uh, you look up, if you just Google Love Layla Designs. Love Layla up. Designs. Love Layla Designs. Dot com. Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. I'll look that up. Just Google Love Layla Designs. It'll be like the first one up. That's all we got for that for now? That's all we got due to technical difficulties That's and the okay. laptop dying. <laughs> Yay for extra technology. That's okay, because what you might not know is I had, oh, since no. today we're talking about secular soup. Right? Oh, no. Well, I had a bit of a uh, pop quiz. <gasps> I so, love pop quiz. I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a pop quiz. I'm going to fail this spectacularly. Absolutely. How about secular soup? I'm going to fail this spectacularly. Okay. Question one. Multiple choice, of course. Oh, perfect. What was the original name of secular soup? Was it A, surprise to see us? Was it B, me so chatty? Was it C, we need support, send money? Or was it D, two girls, one soup bowl? Oh, definitely D. Oh, 100% D. D. D, always D. I love those. Dude, it's it's hilarious how many podcasts have that pun in their title. I'm it's true. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question two. It's, it's been said that Amy has a preoccupation with vengeance. How do we know? Is it A, the creepy doll lamps are actual skulls of her enemies? Is it B, she spent too much time... She doesn't ta- like a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> Is it B, she spent too much time with her cat on Instagram? Is it C, when the therapist mentioned that, uh, uh, when the therapist mentioned that, she answered, we'll see about that. Or is it D? She said. She said, "Left in the valley of pipe bomb." I actually really like A because I I like yeah. imagining her just having these beefs with small children and yes. then murdering them. Yeah, but is that her or you? Her. She's the one with the creepy dolls. Fair. Uh, on their little website of arts and crafts, apparently they make wallets of foreskin. Do you know why? Is it A? They're trying to mimic what King David did on, to show the girls can do it too. Is it B, a foreskin trophies <laughs> of competitive podcasters and waste not material? Or is it C, when rubbed, the wallet turns into a briefcase? <laughs> oh my god, I just got it. That took me a second. I'm like, what? The wallet to the briefcase. <laughs> that flew so far over my head at first. I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> to be fair, I heard robbed. Like, when it's robbed. No, right. And I'm, I'm like, what? <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> okay, question four. Why don't Amy and Amy travel for their show? Is it A, when the hotel staff offers to turn down their bed, it reminds them of their last date? Ooh. Is it B, <laughs> sex on vacation is better and it's a bad postcard to send to their boyfriend? 
<laughs> you see, there's the satellite navigation system says in 400 feet, stop and let me out. <laughs> or is it D? <laughs> she asks Mexicans to help her roll a joint. Eyes heard, and it says anyone have any papers. <laughs> I'm gonna go A. <laughs> I liked I liked C. There's no real question. I know. I'm just There's saying no... which one I like the best. <laughs> All right. So let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have some special guests with Woo-hoo. us, and we'll do. Okay, I have to point out this is going to be satirical, obviously, and we're basically going to be trashing secular soup in a Fox News style panel review of you know our secular soup actual agents of evil or Russian spies. Mwah, uh, Mwah. Uh, uh, yeah, I lived in the valley. My childhood. Lived in the valley is taking. <laughs> a break from our usual super serious tones. Oh yeah, so serious. <laughs> you know, for once we're going to, you know, we're going to the hair down, have a little fun. Oh, you know, I completely forgot. We also <gasps> have Do we have mail? No, no, oh, we don't have mail. I was so excited. Uh, <laughs> we don't have mail, but what we do have uh, before we go on a break, we actually have uh, we uh, we have a clip from the uh, the the president of France. <gasps> oh. Yeah, uh, apparently he was asked about secular soup, so uh, let's find out what he said about that. Alors nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour pouvoir reconnaître les efforts We are here to recognize à propos de le changement climatique. Uh, nous sommes très heureux when it de comes to fighting climate change France, que la personne de Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg a beaucoup uh, poussé la discussion sur le changement climatique mais aussi sur ce que les générations futures doivent that espérer et reconnaître aussi que c'est un peu de, de tous uh, no, no, nos efforts communautaires en tant que l'humanité doivent vraiment Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Secular soup. Hey, I mean, I mean, no, no, no. Who, who, who does this tomato soup with blueberries? It's, it's disgusting. Uh, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, we do not uh, say speak of these. Uh, well, must be t- t- Trump voters or something like that. No, 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 no. Pas du tout, pas du tout. Thank you so much, Mr. Macron. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm God. And I just wanted to make sure to tell you not to listen to Unapologetics on Stitcher and SoundCloud. That's Unapologetics with an X at the end. But, uh, yeah, definitely do not listen to the show. I mean, I swear to me, all right, I will murder my son. Uh, well, I mean, I kind of already did that, but uh, don't, just don't listen to the show, okay? Hey, Lucy. Can you not can you not call me that, okay? We already went over what my name is, okay? It's Lucifer. All right, look, Lewis. Uh, you want to come with me? I'm going to go fuck with this guy, Joe. No, don't do not do that, okay? Can you just leave him alone? Yeah, I'm going to kill his family. No, don't, don't do that. I'm going to give him sores all over his body. Don't, don't, don't do that. That's disgusting. And, uh, I'm going to kill all of his livestock. Just, uh, stop, stop saying things. Just stop. Yeah, I'm going to blame the whole thing on you. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go, bud. Remember, don't listen to Unapologetics on Stitcher and SoundCloud. Hey, definitely listen to that show. It's awesome. It's really cool. He's really a dick. I heard that. If your skepticism is socially conscious and doesn't take itself too seriously, you might like life, the universe, and everything else. People like Ray Comfort are fond of saying, what use is half a wing, right? Have you ever seen a fucking penguin? <laughs> Life, the universe, and everything else. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and pretty much anywhere else. I don't know, Zoom? Is that still a thing? Bible, the Old Testament, which in Genesis is an account of nature. That's, That's what that is. And I said to you, give me your description of the natural world based only on this. You would say the world was created in six days, and that stars are just little points of light, much lesser than the sun. In fact, they can fall out of the sky, right? Because that's what happens during Revelation. To even write that means 
you don't know what those things are. You have no concept of what the actual universe is. So everybody who tried to make proclamations about the physical universe based on Bible passages got the wrong answer. Thank you for joining us today on this beautiful, beautiful, unbiased news channel that we all <laughs> respect bigly. <laughs> I am joined here today by a wonderful panel for our discussion on Is Secular Soup Dangerous? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, first we are joined by Nikki from Youth Activist Woman Negotiators, known as Yawn, and Brent Hello. from People Wanted Clean Environment. United. United. Clean Environment, known as Puke. <laughs> They will be happy to be here. They, they will be trying to inform us of the benefits and the good parts of secular soup. We will fight back. And on the defender's side, gallantly defending the righteous, <laughs> will be Kevin from Buddies Liberating Onerous Braggins. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's Blob. Thank you so much blob. for having me on the show. <laughs> and joining him will be Kirsten from Conscientious <laughs> Neoliberals. So this is just a known as cons. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us all This is just today. as professional as a Fox News segment, I must say, right now. <laughs> They, they are inspiration in everything we do. Well, she got all the names right. Christina, I only do your show. You should know that. I Thank only you. go on your show because you're definitely the, the consummate professional. On this. Well, I guess to introduce Secular Soup, I will go over to the Kevin as he has the most unbiased. <laughs> Well, let me tell you one thing, Christina. I'm glad. I'm glad you came to me first. I mean, who the hell wants to hear from people named from after puke and yawn? I mean, come on. Uh, first of all, I must say, secular soup is a threat to our democracy. I mean, uh, first of all, let's face it this way: these people are named. I just want to point out that blob is not much better. I'm, 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 you know. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, you hold, had your hold, time, sir. Hold, you, hold, please. Yeah, you had your time. No please. personal attacks here. I would not. I would not cut you, you off. No time. You, you had no time. You haven't even got a chance to. The yeah, fact that you even mentioned on the show is even better than what you deserve. But <laughs> think about it this way. Amy, and the name Amy has three letters in her name. You know who else had three letters in her name? JFK. That's right. Is that a coincidence? I think not. Now, with that, okay. well, with that, that, that Peterson as, as introduction, young, we will go over woman to... woman negotiator, that bringing up JFK to talk about young women podcasters is just absurd, Okay. Let's 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 give them the credit that they're due. Being young women on a podcast is revolutionary. Oh, As a what? young woman, being a young woman is a revolutionary thing. I'm, yeah. offended. I'm offended. Oh, of course you are. Jeez, but people from young are always offended. Being a young woman is offensive somehow. All of the young people get so offended nowadays. Jeez, because oh, you're, you're not a snowflake about this subject right now. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. Now I mean, that we've had that introduction, I think we should turn it over to what are the core dangers of secular soup? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because you might not know, but you know, when you have soup, there's an article here, I'll see if well known from Ligbeck in Chile, Germany, that a soup worker cooked uh, himself to death by basically oh, no. listening to the podcast while How cooking How dare soup. you, sir? That's, How dare you? My father toiled away in a soup factory for most of his life. Life. I, I don't okay. think we should bring exactly. our own Did you know into this most conversation. Americans love soup that has no relevance to meal? this. We're talking about secular soup and how they may or may not be dangerous to our <laughs> lives. Well, just, Christina, you got to give me an opportunity to back up soup here because what he just said was very offensive to people who worked in soup factories <laughs> and most Americans who love soup. And I'm clear. I'm I'm the man here, and I'm clearly more qualified than most of the people <laughs> talking right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what it is, 
I, I, you know, I, I, I like to, to challenge the gentleman from Puke uh, by basically saying we all know that ninety percent of all uh, stats are fake and made up on the on the spot. Uh, but oh, yes, to, to, to my point, I was basically saying that the, this this soup worker that was cooked to death in his own soup while listening to Secular Soup happened to work in Germany. Who else was out of Germany? Who else do we know? The the Nazis, of course. You really think that you know? There's a clear link between Secular Soup and yeah. Nazi Germany. They also invented the cell phone. They invented the cell phone. <laughs> Okay. There is no, we, there is what? no facts behind that. We cannot take that into this discussion. We must, we must stick with facts. Like, like Kevin was saying, this, this obviously true article that he is talking about. Absolutely, and you know, we have, we have reasons to believe that Amy herself, as she closed the lid on that poor soup factory worker that cooked himself How to horrible. death. Horrible. I mean, really, I mean, she's definitely a prime suspect in this. Just in this keep repeating that man cooked himself to death, trying to smear. You're clearly trying to smear. This is too much. This is a complete smear. Because obviously, uh, listen, there's nothing about secular soup that means you have to eat. Can we move on, please? We've gotten caught up in this point of view because Blob is being ridiculous. Can we move on to the next point? I think we should try to stay away from the disparaging of people's characters here. And And what about ramen noodles? Are they soup or are they not? (laughs) <laughs> that's what I want to know. Well, that's another thing, too. I mean, fr- friendly, you get tomato soup with blueberries and not even any noodles in that soup. Is it even a nutritious meal? I've got to ask, are they even blueberries or are they secretly tracking devices that they're finally getting to That is, that is a startlingly piercing question. I think we should focus on this for a second. And who the, hell, who the hell does put blueberries in tomato soup anyway? Exactly. That is my point. Several <laughs> sources. I've heard from several sources. That would be my one point of agreement. <laughs> but you, know, you know who does that kind of stuff? Communists. Yes. Communists do that kind of stuff. And they're after your children and mine. No, no. I myself am a communist and we do not <laughs> do that. Wait a minute, you're right. saying and the people that puke are communists? little faces on them, making them look like little, two little boiled people in soup. And we wouldn't do that. Okay? Well, communists I, are I, friendly. I think, I think now that we have given Kevin and Kirsten their chance to share their points of views, I would like to focus on Nikki and Brent. I want to hear your reasoning why you believe secular soup is not dangerous for our communities. Okay. Well, when you do your shows com- that are completely erratic and basically just a conversation... We are in, not in talking about my shows here. We are talking about... Danger. We are talking about the secular soup. Yes. Uh, the, but when you do a show that's so that doesn't have any basis or you talk about anything at all other than, you know, just your personal lives, and you, there's no danger there, okay? They're just humans experiencing life, exactly. okay? And they're talking about it. And but- I'm here to talk about why I support youth activist woman negotiators. Yes, <laughs> Secular Soup is not about that at all. And neither one of them is really good at probably negotiating. And who knows about activism? But you know what? There are some women who are activists. Oh, come on, Nikki. When was the last time you actually had and a good I'm here to support them. I'm here to support them existing. So you exist, Amy and Amy. No, no, you no. Exist. First of all, we, nobody can prove these people actually exist. There's no actual good pictures of them. There's a picture of a cat on Instagram. That's all we see. Okay? And Nikki, when was the last time you actually had a good bowl of soup? Do you know how hard it is for a cat Yesterday. to set up an Instagram? Do you know how hard it is for a cat to do that? Okay, How I do think we know they needed to know. Okay. And I probably shouldn't admit this on this channel, but I'm going to. And you know what, Jan, I'm sorry. But I had one of the best bowls of wonton soup I'd ever had in my life. Yes, I eat food that is called wonton soup. I'm sorry. So she's obviously... The, you, the, you, the fingers don't even push the buttons. It's... <laughs> So you're obviously incredibly a, biased. You're obviously incredibly biased towards soup, although it seems to be Chinese soup for some reason, the wonton. I'm kind of suspicious about that. Are you calling me elitist Robin because I amazing. enjoy soup of it's the world? It's amazing. Nikki, Do we need to talk about what the Chinese have given to our country? I'm sorry, Nikki, but not everybody can afford wonton in their soup. You don't, you're not in touch with the real problem that's the facing America today. The There's not enough wontons to go around. Ramen soup. Anybody can. It's a 10 cents. It's 10 so, fucking cents. I, American. I want to to pull this back um, a little because so we're, is we're getting so energetic in this discussion. <laughs> I want us to talk about who is Amy and Amy. Well, who are the people behind this? I will tell you something. Movement. I will tell you something right now. If you take secular soup, it's an anagram for Russo crap. 
And you know who Rousseau was? He was a French philosopher. You know, he was a French philosopher who actually predicted the arrival of politicians like Donald Trump. So I think Amy and Amy are actual Russian plants. And this proves a direct link to them. Exactly. This whole secular Certainly. soup podcast thingy going on here. It's all a conspiracy. They're trying to brainwash the young people of America and take over. That's right. What do you have to say, Brent and Nikki? Well, you know what? I think if you're going to take old things and make them into new things somehow miraculously, that that is a good thing. Okay? That is a good thing. And that is what Amy is doing. Amy with a Y. And that's why it's spelled W-H-Y. Um, that, it, that they do good. For this world, I mean, they repurpose. I mean, that's environmental as exactly. fuck. Exactly, but I mean, how would we say trust that warning people of a Donald Trump? I'm not one of those people, but many people would say that warning of a Donald Trump is is something of a good deed. If you've been on the website, you check out that they sell creepy doll lamps with you know creepy doll heads <laughs> figuring on their laps. I mean, one can really start questioning the character of a person who does that. You know, and they've said many times they're in it for. Money. Okay, and you can't you can't just you 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 can't buy nightmares like that. Okay, they, they provided a a, a, a a necessary service for my nightmares. Well, okay? you know, that, maybe I the people puke want nightmares, but you know the okay, so the average American family does not. You know, you, I really think you need to start also, thinking about the children there. Sir, excuse me, you're from Blob. Is your organization aware that right now you're arguing against capitalism? That you're arguing against the Amy's creating for a niche audience what they so desire and making creators. money off of no, it? This exactly. Is... We're talking about job creators here. <laughs> We're talking about entrepreneurs. But what is their about big goal women in this job creation? Negotiators. What are you talking about here, sir? Job, Blah. job Don't creator. What job creator? Don't what are you talking man. about? They're employing one person we're not even sure exists. So far, the only people getting getting money out of this is a cat on Instagram. So I think the, the cat exists. Okay, <laughs> I mean, this is silly. That's been demonstrated through the the media outlets that we have sourced Look. properly, and we made sure that this cat does it, in fact exist. If you go so, back in the I history, don't need sources no on that, more. Brent. I I don't I don't I don't know their skills in Photoshop. Sorry. How do we know that did, it's you know, true? did you get sources from Kevin from Blob when he started telling us all of these insane things? Well, look, where we, is sources? We we, we, we have his source. My source, okay, I've got my one source. It's called the CIA, okay, and we had an operation in the sixties oh. called Acoustic oh, Kitty. Oh, no. Okay, okay, CIA so they, fucking trust where oh. That's right. Whoa. It's one of the branches. You know, <laughs> sorry, I, I haven't thrown. PC, I'm, so, I'm sorry if Yawn and Puke have decided to take the side of the communist. But I still believe in our government the functions and what they what our experts are saying and our FBI and CIA are saying. And there was a, an acoustic kitty in the sixties that they used to spy on the Russians, and I think that the Russians right that now are reversing that on us. Conspiracy hogwash. I heard you say yourself that it wasn't true. I, I, I swear what? when it first came out the story, he said it wasn't true. He was not convinced himself. Okay. That's <laughs> this is and hogwash. So no, no. No, 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 no. There's no hog. There's no pig washing in this whatsoever. I don't know where you're going with this. I don't know why you brought a pig. We're talking about a cat here. <laughs> there might be a hog on Instagram as well. I don't know. I haven't checked that. I'm not on Instagram that much. <laughs> so what you're saying is you came here today to debate something that you're not even fully informed on? Well, Christina, you know, what kind of dog and pony show is this? What am I on? I am as a representative get, of Yawn, I am trying to get points of view from all sides in an unbiased way. Of course she's offended. She's offended if we don't include pigs in the discussion for some reason. You know, they're really... Pigs are important. Pigs matter. <laughs> Listen, pigs lives matter. Oh, God, take that part out. <laughs> Look, I'm 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 as pro bacon as anybody else, okay? <laughs> but if you guys love pigs so much, maybe you should join another religion that's really pro pig and doesn't really want the pigs in the, in the neighborhood, and that's Islam, okay? Maybe you guys should go back to Islam. <laughs> Look, pagans like to wear pig faces. It's 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 in a central tenet of the religions, okay? So you know what? I think that that means more than. The Muslim religion. And remember, yeah, Christina, some Americans there. support this. So, you know, who are we to argue about it? <laughs> I think that we should discuss moving forward. How are we going to deal with the possible ramifications 
of secular soup in our lives. Because we've talked about how they, they affect our everyday existence and are infecting communism into our lives. <laughs> I think we should talk. How are we going to move forward in this? Well, well, I, I'm glad to announce that here the the people at Blob we've Why calculated. Why does he always get to speak first, Christina? I mean, really, we have barely heard from Kirsten. Listen, what what for you? Well, the, <laughs> Kirsten's laughing too much to judge. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if the people at Yawn would shut up for a minute, maybe the people <laughs> at Cause would have something to know. She's, she's signaling she's got nothing to say at this point. Okay, what I'm trying to say here is <laughs> we've, we've, we've calculated at Con and Blob that uh, people the consumption of soup in the U.S. is decreasing by 30% every year, and we're glad to see that. So the, the soup is on the way out. But does that mean that, you know, the, the, there's still a side dish? So there's always a chance for infection of your meal. And of course, there are soup kitchens in every corner. Exactly. There are, uh, there are ramen places popping up everywhere. Hipsters love it. Yes. Okay? And when was the last time you, know, you saw Amy and Amy help in a soup kitchen? It's on the right. When was the last time you saw Amy and Amy help in any soup kitchen? Put your money where your mouth is, Amy. That is a, a they got very good out Only because they kept putting blueberries in everybody's tomato soup. It's, it's not their fault, okay? That was totally on the institution in not liking things that are not likable. It's not their fault at all. Exactly. And Amy and Amy are only stand-ins for what soup can be for you. Who cares what their soup consumption or work is? We, I mean, we, it's yeah. very important to know what's a consu- what you're consuming. Are you telling us? Are you telling the American people they should just be ignorant of what they eat? That's very bad for your health. What the hell are you trying to pull on us here? I'm Wait a minute. I bet, you, did, the Amy's I bet you that puke and yawn. I bet you that puke and yawn are paid off yeah. by Big Pharma. I bet you <laughs> puke and yawn are paid off by Big Pharma. You guys are trying to make us sick, aren't you? <laughs> No. <laughs> no, we don't sit on boards yeah. of multiple insurance companies. I see. Yon has nothing to do with that. <laughs> I just want to stop. What's the next question? Everybody just needs to stop, and I just need to say that <laughs> both of you are wrong. Okay. I and don't we, think we on this bring side those, right. those kind of words into if this discussion. Enough, <laughs> I think I think we can we can all try to see each other's points of view without bringing such black. I can't even white. see your point of view. You don't. I. I, I <laughs> no, it's it's obviously we're, we're not going to solve this today. But I'd like to remind the uh, the American public one thing. Okay, soup comes from uh, uh, started out as a restoration meal, right? And restoration start of comes from a restaurant, of course, which was influenced by the French. So it's kind of suspicious there. It also came out of the Roman Empire. And what happened in the Roman Empire? They killed Jesus. So there, I that, think there's your link. That is that is a startling way to to end this discussion. I. I think I think we've said all we can here, and thank you everyone for joining us. I mean, really, it was very it, it was very more. good to have you all here, and I I thank you, but, and I hope we can all have but, more discussions in the future. Thank I don't, you so much. I don't much. think you should invite Puke anymore. No, I will just I will bring whoever I desire. <laughs> I don't think you should invite him anymore. Wow, <laughs> are you? That was brilliant, guys. That was fucking I, brilliant. Kirsten, Kirsten's having oh the hardest time just not laughing at her mic. I'm <laughs> dying because I still have a little bit, apparently, I'm a little bit congested still, and I was just, like, trying not to cough into the mic the whole time because <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> this is brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. Oh, that was so excellent. I, 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 that was a great idea, Kevin. I thought, yeah, I, I, idea. thought I channeled the, like... Unreasonable host, very well. Yes, yes we totally did. Only on the right wing side, but trying to act like they aren't. You did very Loved well. It. You did very well. Being like, oh, Kevin, you're so unbiased. And you guys, oh, we shouldn't bring these words into this. <laughs> We're saying that like, oh, Kevin is. <laughs> calling on sources? <laughs> you shouldn't bring the word wrong in the discussion. There's no wrong in this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god. why I said you should do it. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, Brad, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. But uh, give you guys thank a plug. Thank you for having us. Give you guys a plug, man. If people want to find out more about your adventures at Unapologetics, where can they find you? 
Uh, we are at, uh, we're, well, you can put in uh, unapologetics, pretty much uh, what's spelled with an X at the end. And any podcast um, listener, you know, you can pretty much find us anywhere. Spotify, Spotify Stitcher, Stitcher, iTunes, iTunes all of those. I, 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 and, and, and to be complete. Um, and, and, and we're also on Facebook. Uh, you can email us at unapologetic666 at gmail.com. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll and to be completely transparent, Nikki and Brent are not part of Yawn and Puke, which is to be sure, <laughs> just in case somebody starts looking out there. <laughs> I gotta say though, I see why now the both siderists are so chill, cool as cucumbers, because really, oh, it feels good to not believe in anything, right? <laughs> That's know? what I like. When it comes to like debates, it's great to have not have a position. <laughs> <laughs> It's all you, dude. Me breaking down your shit. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And well, y'all enjoy your your forty degree balmy weather. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, oh, that's so hot. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed our bashing of secular soup. I think I have a career path in hosting. Uh, you could totally you go. Can. Fox News needs to call you right now. I vote Christina hosting the show next time. No. <laughs> That's hey, a big no. What happened last time you did something like that and you ended up being catapulted? Yeah. <laughs> I learned from my mistakes. I got mail when I did it. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you to Brett and Nikki of Unapologetics for being the uh, compatriots in this. And thank you for listening. You can find us at leftatvalley.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, at LETV Podcast. Send us an email at left at valley at outlook.com. Uh, give us a five star review where you find us. It helps others and helps us find the show. You can become a patron at uh, Patreon slash LETV. And you get a lot of extra you talking. You get a lot of extra talking and behind the scenes and all that stuff. It's yeah. totally worth it. And then you get some inside jokes sometimes that you yeah, might not right. get if you just listen to the show regular. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, where am I going here? Well, you know what? I'm not going to look at my schedule because next week we have our Christmas special. So we'll be talking about that. And after that, our end of the year special, the top 10 best of 2019. All right. Anything else I need to add? Nah. Yeah, we're good. Until next time. He passed out drunk again. Probably. You know? (laughs) What time is it even in Texas? I don't I think it's like an hour Um, after. It's it's 18.12. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hold on. Again, the military Um, time. Oh, God. And you know what's just I was, I was eating you. So <laughs> okay, that would be 12. six, twelve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I get flustered, but then I'm like, wait, I can do this. Wait, the battle of eighteen twelve? You want a regional scale? Science is universal. Were you to say that Horus isn't real, but Jesus is, or Zeus, so a myth for fish, knew you don't believe in them. I think the reason is apparent. You do what you're told and believe in the God of Signed by your parents. I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith in unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. Atheist, atheist. I'm an atheist. Atheist, atheist. Now let me take a sec, don't mean to sound so hateful But I swear to God, pun intended, I find it disgraceful The thousands of children are raped by priests And since they're holy men of God, they get away scot-free And the Pope does his very best to keep it on the hush Don't wanna affect business, he loves money too much We know that they love the kids, but how the fuck can we protect them While they plan to molest them, we teaching them to respect them Respect them the system is broke down, working backwards in the only action of tactic I plan to practice now is to attack them. The parties of God's hands are bloodstained, millions of murders by believers, and they're all in God's name. And let me take a sec, don't mean to sound so hateful, but I swear to God, unintended, I find it disgraceful. That many atheists are told to be quiet, you're not alone, speak your mind, time to let it be known. I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen, I call it how I see it, I say it's ignorance and you just call it faith.
and unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed.